Welcome to Dude RV. Hey, I really appreciate you stopping by and you got here just in time. That's right, just in time for another virtual campground tour of a Texas state park. Today, I find myself at Tyler State Park, just north of Tyler, Texas, in the East Texas Piney Woods. Such a beautiful campground. This is one of the this is a gym in the Texas State Park System, built by the CCC way back in the day, 1935, 1940. Normally I would do this tour on Little Red, the high speed mobility scooter, but we had a catastrophic failure yesterday. So we will be doing a driving tour in White Lightning. So we're gonna mount the camera on the dash and we'll give you a tour of Tyler State Park. All right, all right. Let's get this show on the road. As I mentioned, Tyler State Park was built by the Civilian Conservation Corps in the New Deal era. It's situated in a, in a bowl. It's, there's a little spring-fed lake crystal clear and up until on my last visit here two years ago there was no cell service but they've since erected a tower and with the Verizon I get three bars of 4G park headquarters is being relocated and we will see Good morning. Good morning. Good day. You too. We will see the new park headquarters that is under construction. I think it's supposed to be completed by next year. Wildlife is very abundant in this park, especially raccoons. You're gonna be camping in Tyler State Park. Make sure you secure not only your garbage, but your ice chests and food boxes as well. You know, those little raccoons will get into everything. They are not shy. Coming up here on the right, that big blue building will be the new park headquarters. So the park road is a big loop around the lake. For this tour, we are going to travel to the right. We're going to visit all of the RV camping loops and day use area first and then we're going to go around the back side and we'll come out right here on the left and that's where we'll be finishing up you'll see that you're going to want to stay to the end because we're going to visit the screen shelters and cabin loop at the end This is one of three RV camping areas. This is 30 and water. It's at the top of the hill, and this used to be the only place where you could get a cell signal, but that's since been improved upon. We're at the middle of, in the middle of June, 2022, it's Tuesday. Most, but not all, most of the RV sites are occupied.
moving on down the hill. There are several group dining areas like here on the left. It's a, it's a group picnic area. Several of those. And there is also one air-conditioned group dining hall. And that will be one of the last things we drive by today. If there is one thing that Tyler State Park can, can lay a claim to fame on, it is the day use swim and boat area. This is your day use swim area. It's kind of hard to see from here, but I do have an experiential video that aired this past Sunday. And I give you a good look at the, the beach, the swim area, as well as the boat dock. Place was very busy yesterday. So this is just primarily day use picnic. There's also a trailhead. There's a lake, or there's a trail that circumnavigates the lake. And there's a trailhead up here for that. That's what we see here on the right after we pass the dumpster. On my last visit, I actually was able to navigate some of that on a little red most of it as a matter of fact you get toward the back side of the lake it gets real rough with tree roots which was kind of where I lost a little red on this visit of course that problem was was there I just didn't catch it in my PM periodic maintenance Yesterday there were a lot of, I, I presume that they were local families out here swimming and boating and kayaks. State Park is really geared towards, of course most state parks are geared toward the family. There's all, lots of stuff for the kids to do here. Different kinds of watercraft to rent from kayaks to canoes and rowboats. Here there is a playground. Northwoods Pavilion is another group gathering area. 
There's also a hike and bike trailhead here. They have quite a few hike and bike trails. And the terrain here is very hilly, as you can see, very wooded. Most of the trails are not accessible to me with my scooter because of the multiple grade changes. The little lake is fed by a spring. So the only water that gets into this lake comes through that spring. So there is a boat ramp from a boat ramp fan. It is a no wake lake. A little island for to fish off of. They have, at one time they had uh, two additional fishing platforms, docks. But those are both out of order. They uh, need some maintenance. Well, of the three RV camping loops, there is one that actually provides you with views of the lake, and that is Lake View. This is my preferred camping loop. They are full connection, 30 and 50 amp sites. As you can see, it's a mix of back ends and pull through. There's a chateau. Built on the F550 chassis. I love that platform. My, I have three preferred sites. We just passed one of those that pull through on the left. Uh, if those are not available, I like these two here on the left. They are now numbered 209 and the one right here on the left is 211 and that is where I actually spent the night. Site number 211. Those are mixed RV tent. There's tent pads at each one of those sites. The last loop, RV camping loop, there are, tents are not allowed in this loop. These are all pull throughs, 30 and 50 with sewer. It is full. take that back. There were actually some sites available. A little bit of 
some glare, sorry about that. head over to the group camp the group RV camp it's at the back of the park on the back of the loop and if you've got an electric bike you're going to like this road Little Red struggles with the hills on this road Another trailhead we just passed. outflow from the lake crosses the road now we gotta climb the hill uh, you can't tell on the, the camera but this is a very long very steep hill there's actually a sign at the top of this hill cautioning cyclist that it could be a hazard came down this hill on Little Red. I was flying! <laughs> brakes did slow me down a little bit, but I gotta have new brake pads now. side of that sign right there on the left it says cyclist beware steep green so blackjack savannah is your group rv campsite well there is a lot of Highway noise here at, at the, this camp. Easy for me to say. There's a lot of highway noise when you're camping out here because this is the highest point. You're catching the sound coming off of I 20. I got a great big cooker for you. I don't know how many sites they have. It says on the sign, but I didn't pay any attention. There's 15. Place for 15 RVs to connect. And if you have soft start on your ACs, you can maybe double up on some of those. up we are going to visit primitive camping loops there's some 
really pretty ones here. A little glare on the windshield, sorry about that. There's a south side day use area. This is where you would access the fishing dock if it was uh, accessible. It is not accessible. But there's a place to park and you can access the Lake Loop Trail from here. But dead ahead, that's an overlook where you can see nothing. There's too many trees. And maybe when they designated that as an overlook, there weren't all these tall trees. I don't know. But you can see the parking lot. And that's about it. There was no one here yesterday when I visited. Now we're going to go see primitive sites. Right now the, the temperature is 81 degrees and the dew point is in the 70s. What that means if, if you don't live in a humid environment, what that means is as soon as you get out of air conditioning you're wet. Moisture's condensing on you. Feels like sweat. A lot of it is sweat. Most, of, a lot of it is just moisture in the atmosphere. So primitive camping in in this type of weather, ah, uh, you you got to be serious about it. This is the, the humidity didn't drop, start dropping out of the atmosphere last night until about uh, midnight, two o'clock in the morning. I was I was tent camping last night. I have the Zero Breeze AC with me, and it could just barely keep up with the amount of humidity. Dogwood Ridge. But if you want camp by yourself Dogwood Ridge, these primitive sites over here. Yesterday there were only a handful of campers. I don't expect that to be any different today.
That was a trip coming up this hill right here on Little Red. Why don't I switch back when you get up? This is Red Oak. We're going to go to the left this time. Really tight. Should have went to the right. Maybe it wouldn't have been so tight. All right, two more primitive roots to go. And then we have screen shelters and cabins. Hello. That would be a good fight right there. Fight number 705. That opens up to the water. It is primitive. And there's going to be no wind down in this holler. That means it'll be very sticky and oppressively humid.
this is Sumac Bend, area number eight. It is the final primitive camping loop for us to drive through. These are actually water sites. There's no power. So we're semi-primitive. Big 03 is a nice one. And 804. Let's go see some screen children. Why don't we? Reason? It's surprising to me as to how many screen shelters there are here in Tyler State Park. There's a lot. There's not anything in those buildings, those shelters. There's no table. There's electricity, and there's bug screening to keep bugs off of it. Heat shelter has a water hydrant outside. We want most of the shelters we will be seeing now on our right have access to the lake trail. This road to our left here, that's, that goes right back across to the other side of this loop. With cabins on both sides, just as we see here. Actually, they're not cabins, they're shelters. Cabins come next.
visit the Creekside area. Creekside has air-conditioned cabins. And as you'll see, there's also a very large group dining hall that is air-conditioned as well. Surprisingly enough, there are a couple of cabins available today. Big hill. There's a lot of hill climbing to be done. Well, that brings us to the end of our driving tour of Tyler State Park, one of the true gems in the Texas State Park system. If you enjoyed our little ride through, I'd appreciate you clicking on that thumbs up. That really helps with the YouTube algorithm. I don't know what that means, but everybody else says it, so I'll say it too. If you've not already, I'd be most honored if you'd cl consider clicking on the subscribe button. And for those of you who have been following along, I so appreciate it. Thank you. That's, that's why we're about to hit 16,000 subscribers. Thank you for that. And for my patrons. You rock. All right. Y'all come back now, you hear?